Hello world and hello to all the nurse champions out there. I am Nurse Sal and welcome back to my channel. To those of you who are new here, thank you for joining us and welcome to the team. I know you're here because you wanted a continuation regarding bubble assessment for type 6 and type 7 which is the part B of the exam. You may head back to the other video which I have discussed uh, the bowel assessment, what it's for. I have done the introduction regarding the bowel assessment and the part A of the exam which is the type 1 and type 2 which is the constipation segment. Head to Nurse Niso YouTube channel and find the bowel assessment type 1 and type 2 video. Now in this video, we are going to discuss just the counterpart of that which is the diarrhea. The part B of the exam which is the type 6 or a type 7. You ready? Let's go. But before that, please give this video a like and subscribe to my channel so I'll be more enthusiastic to post more OSCE videos. And if you want to get notified, then hit the notification bell. And like I said, be part of the team. What uh, let me just say a quick introduction. Bowel assessment is another new OSCE skill station that has been introduced last November 2022. So it's like the nutritional assessment and it's divided into uh, part A and part B. So I have discussed a part A on the other video and this is the part B. Let's head to it. Familiarize yourself with the Bristol stool chart. We're going to head to the marking criteria in which the NMC is going to check. Later on, we're going to do an example scenario. So we're going to answer all of that. And hopefully that would help you pass your OSCE exam. Let me just remind you again regarding the marking criteria. This is the Bible for the OSCE exam. For this bowel assessment, you have um, know all these marking criteria for you to be able to write a care plan for the patient. But like I said, there's just too many of them. You don't need to memorize all of them. We're just going to get the keywords and then later on, I'm going to give you a mnemonics um, from those keywords to make it more simpler. If you see those letter or mnemonic, you will remember the answer right away. That's making our studying or memorization easy because, um, uh, because it's more simplified but then again why am I bothering to discuss to you about bowel assessment if I could just tell you to just memorize it and copy and paste no I'm not gonna do that um, what I'm trying to discuss to you today is that when you are able to understand the bowel assessment and how to do it to your patient then you'll be able to have this skill as you have your pain as you work to the hospital care home or community you have already this basic skill in yourself as a weapon during the war just kidding as a skill, a special skill for you to do a bowel assessment. Like I said, it's basic, so you need to know that, okay? You have to know it by heart. You have to know, understand, and learn it by heart. That's why we are doing this video. Otherwise, I could just tell you to just discuss in case. But no, I'm gonna teach you how to make it more simpler. I'm gonna make you understand, make it more simpler as you understand, and even more simpler as we make our own mnemonics about it. So you are be able to pass your OSCE exam. Yay! Anyway, marking criteria for part B, you have to achieve full marks, okay? This means that you have a minimum of five aspects of care. Then you've got partial marks, which is, again, equivalent to a fail if you got a minimum of three, okay? So again, give more aspects of care as much as possible, all right? Anyway, this is what the video is about. I'm going to show you how to remember all these marking criteria. Let's dig in. The first marking criteria is to identify or recognize the Bristol stool type, type 6 or type 7. There you have it. The marking criteria is telling you that that's already the answer. All you have to do is to choose if it's type 6 or type 7. The next criteria is to consider possible causes of loose stools or the diarrhea. Um, again, what are those things that may cause loose stools? Yes, food poisoning. That's true. That's correct. What else? Some medication also causes this one, such as antibiotics. Ugh, it's the culprit sometimes. Yes, that would make you have a loose stool. What else? Just an overflow. Overflow is the culprit of this one is constipation. When you are very constipated, if the rectum is really full but not really emptying, the tendency, it licks. That's the overflow. That's why it's called an overflow. 
now you know. What other things that can cause, okay, healthcare uh, infections such as norovirus. Yes, that is correct. Here in the UK, we call it the winter vomiting bug because from the name itself, it causes vomiting and diarrhea at the same time, okay? What else? C. diff, obviously. C. diff as well. Uh, Crucidium difficile. Mild absorption such as um, what? Crohn's disease. What else? Chronic pancreatitis and mm, what else? And mm, if I'm not mistaken, cystic fibrosis. Yeah, that would cause you loose stools. And there you have it. To those of you who are new, I normally put some letters as part of the mnemonics underneath. So the first one, the first criteria is identify the identify the type of stool, which is type 6 or 7. So I put the word is identify. So I'll put an I in there. For this one, for the second one, the key word is a cause of loose stool. I'll just take away again CA. So I'll put it in there. Okay. Now for the third marking criteria is consider infection control measures. So what are this? Meaning you have to consider if the patient needs isolation and then sending stool sample for culture. Okay. Always remember this one. So what's our takeaway for this? What's our keyword? Yes. Infection control measures. So I'll, I'll just take I in there. Okay. The next marking criteria is offers dietary advice. So this time, as compared to the type 1 and type 2 for the constipation, this time when, when we have diarrhea or loose stool, we have to still offer dietary advice but we have to let them know that they have to reduce fruits and vegetables because it causes peristalsis and the fibers sweeps our intestine. So basically, it will cause you more diarrhea or loose stools, okay? Again, reduce fruits and vegetables. So what's our takeaway words here? What's our keyword? Dietary advice. So I'll just put letter, letter D. I'll just put D, dietary advice. That's it. There you go. Okay, the next criteria is proposes obtaining a prescription of anti-motility medication. You can only do this if you suspect that the loose tool is non-infectious. Okay, so just a side note, what are the anti-motility drugs that are readily available for us in the hospital? That, what are the common ones that we normally use in the hospital? Anti-motility drugs? Only, only if not infectious, we can use loperamides. Lumotil. The most common one, Imodium. And there you have it. Same with the part A. You have to also consider dehydration and encourage the patient to increase fluid intake. Okay? The patient is losing a lot of fluid because of the diarrhea. So you have to replenish them. Okay? Increase fluid intake. That's my takeaway. So what's the word that I can get here? Letter I. Again, side note. You have to really look at the signs of dehydration look at the early signs and the late signs okay so just uh, what are these signs uh poor skin triggers dry lips sunken eyeballs obviously dry skin okay there are loads okay you have to be more careful and you have to identify if there's a dehydration happening to your patient all right okay next criteria consider perianal skin integrity oh because this happens all the time. If the patient is consistently having loose stools, the skin surrounding the perianal area is just worst. Okay, so make sure you maintain the skin integrity of that one. Keep the patient, keep it clean and dry. Okay, otherwise, the patient will be in a lot of pain. The, uh, it would add more infection and you're going to be in trouble as well. Again, make sure to consider the perianal skin integrity. Okay? okay. Same as the part A, this part B also, you, you have to promote positive toilet habits. What are these? The same thing. Privacy, positioning, close proximity to the toilet or, or commode because um, some other patients aren't able to run, okay? Going to the toilet because it's gonna go out. So make sure that there's bedpan or commode readily available for the patient. And also consider the spending time going to the toilet. All right, so what's our keyword here? Toilet, positive toilet habit. So I'll just get toilet maybe, the word toilet. So I'll just put again T-O. That would remind me, okay, same as the part A. And the last one would be, yes, you guessed it right. Same as the part one. You have to reassess and monitor the patient's bowels uh, regularly. It recognizes the need to continue assess bowels. So my takeaway word here is assess or monitor as I'll just put the word as down there. That would remind me. Those so, are all the marking criteria for this uh, for the part B which is a type 6, type 7 more on loose tools or diarrhea. Let's get a recap. All of this marking criteria we converted into 
these keywords right here. Identify if it's type 6 or 7. Causes of loose stools. The next one would be I, infection control measures. Yes. Dietary advice. Anti-motility medication. Increased fluid intake. Perianal skin integrity. Positive toilet habits. And assess. Assess or monitor the patient's bowel movements regularly. And here's my take, okay? Uh, if I would be going to the exam, I would do this. You get it? So, these are my mnemonics, okay? So, it's easier for you to understand, isn't it? So, I can just say, I ka, I da, I per, to us. I ka, I da, I per, to us. That's all I need to memorize. Those letters will remind me the answer to this care plan. So, it's good. It's good that you, when you go to the exam, you already have this weapon before you go to the war. Again, it's just my take. That's how I memorize things. That's how I remember things. Okay, that's why it's very important that you understand what the bowel assessment is all about. Then in there, you would uh, know what these letters, or what these keywords and these letters are all about. And here we go again for the most awaited part of this video is the sample scenario. Here we go. Look at the chart. This is a sample scenario, if I could just read it for you. Willow was admitted into your ward with vomiting and abdominal pain. She's also been having watery or loose stools. As a nurse taking care of her, you will need to do a bowel assessment. And then you have to provide an appropriate plan of care for Willow. Are you ready? Here we go. So this is the chart and this is the photo. We've got the photo six or seven. All we have to do is to identify it. So what's your answer? We got to put the date, the time, and then identify the photo, which is, yes, that is type six. It's fluffy, rugged on the edges, a mushy stool. So it's positive, it is type six. So we have to tick it according to the type, and then we get to put our signature or initials. Okay, now for the plan of care. Here we go. For the plan of care, I'm going to give you a chance to write one right here, right now. If you could just pause the video, then make your own. And then later on, I'll give you my answer. These are only my take if ever I'll be going to the exam and taking this bowel assessment. Okay, pause the video and do your plan of care. Once you're ready, you can play the video. All right, so let's answer this. If ever I'll be going to the exam and doing this bowel assessment, this is only my take. These are my answers, okay? The first one, it, we already identified what type it is, so that one is done. Next is the causes of a uh, loose stool or watery stool. So I will consider any possible uh, causes of the loose stool, considering food poisoning, overflow, medication, probably healthcare acquired if the patient is having an infection such as norovirus or C. diff or uh, even a malabsorption. I will also consider infection control measures if ever the patient needs isolation and I will send sample to the laboratory. I will offer dietary advice to Willow such as reducing uh, intake of fruits and vegetables. I will refer the patient to the doctor proposing uh, anti-motility medication, especially if I know that this is not infection cost. I will consider dehydration and I will definitely encourage the patient to increase fluid intake. If the patient is having loose too, I will definitely will consider and maintain perianal skin integrity. Lastly, I will promote positive toilet habits for Willow, making sure to give her privacy, advice for positioning, making sure that a bedpan or commode is readily available, and consider the proximity of the toilet and spending time going to the toilet. I will need to reassess and monitor the patient's bowel movement regularly. And there you have it, guys. That's how easy it is. Okay, that's how easy it is. Just stick to your marking criteria and you know the answer to this station. Oh yeah, make sure that your handwriting is clear and legible. Also, ensure that your strike through errors uh, retain legibility, okay? And lastly, you have to be professional all throughout this station. I hope you learned something for today. Good luck on your exam and thank you for joining me today. Make sure to like this video and leave comments. I normally read comments. You can tell me what do I need to do next and, and please do subscribe to my channel so I'd be more enthusiastic to post more videos. Also, if you want to get notified, then hit the notification bell right there and become part of the team. Thank you again for today and I'll see you on the next one. Bye!